afternoon Martinistas. I'm having to do another impromptu introduction from Cholton Kamadi in South Manchester. But the vlog I'm about to bring you is the last vlog of the Catharist series. I have some footage of a lunch I had at the end before I went and a lot of pictures and clips of dishes from various other meals I went to which I didn't vlog. But those dishes are well worth seeing so the second half of the video will be a bit like a slideshow but it is well worth watching until the end because it'll give you some great ideas about the sort of food that you can get in Spain. If I can get it, you the viewers can get it as well. I the mutton, I'm a mere an ordinary tourist. Enjoy the video. So after that meat feast, and what a meat feast it was, certainly the best pork I can ever remember tasting, we're going to move on somewhere for some more simple fare. Dishes which you probably know if you've been to Spain or even eaten at Spanish restaurants in your own country. But I thought I'd better show you the real deal because a lot of them come from this area. So I'm at the restaurant Taperia Iberico and it's in the same square as we've eaten a few times. It is not only a very aesthetically pleasant square, it is full of good eateries. And I've eaten here many times and not only does it have decent quality food but a huge variety at great cost. So the first things have arrived. First of all we have one of my favourites as you know, gazpacho. Here, served in a glass, as is often the case. Cold tomato soup, olive oil, tomatoes, salt and a little vinegar. And the quality of the tomatoes, it's what it's all about. Now, it is an Andalusian soup, but it's also an Extremadura soup. They are very similar. Mm, that is lovely. For me, I can have it on a warm day or a cold day. And obviously, we have to have something to accompany such fine dishes. The next dish, another classic. Lots of parts of Spain produce ham, but Extremadura, Pork County. They specialise in pork products, salami, chorizo, ham, sausage, you name it. And this ham looks absolutely gorgeous. Some really rich streaks of fat here, which is very important. Uh, just a little bit of olive oil. Mm rich and meaty don't be frightened of fat it is such an important component of dishes like this and if you want the best quality ham always look for jamón ibérico bayota which means the pigs have been fed on acorns the next dish we have on the table a local cheese now it might look like manchego but it isn't it is a local sheep's cheese and I've been told that I'll like it because it's a bit strong so I'm happy I've got white wine for this even though with the ham it's better to have red it's not terrible to have white with ham so let's give that a go not as firm as a manchego but the soft torta del casal which we've been having and the sheep's cheese are the daddies of the local cheese production i quite like this one however i do prefer the torta del casal but that doesn't mean this one's bad and of course when you order a tapa in spain you often see these little sort of breadsticks or bread biscuits. They're called picos. They go quite nicely with a bit of ham or cheese. Firm and crunchy, a bit like a breadstick. Maybe a cross between a biscuit and a breadstick. And then we have something I've never tried before called patatera, which is a type of embutido. I mean, it looks like a potato smeared onto a piece of bread, but no, it's not. It's actually sausage-based, I believe, and comes with a honey topping. We just ordered a tostada of it because we didn't want a massive plateful of it. Let's give it a whirl. A bit of patatera. Mmm. 
It's like a smoky pureed sausage with a tiny bit of honey and olive oil on the top. Something very interesting. I, I recommend you try it if you're here. It's something that I've never seen before. Maybe it's available in other parts of Spain, but I, I don't recall seeing it on a menu wherever I've been. But then again, I don't go looking for extra menu restaurants when I'm in other parts of Spain. And of course, just for quality control purposes, to check that the stuff matches with red as well, I've ordered a glass of the house red. And for the few euros it costs, two or three, it really is rather splendid. Look at that deep, red, rich colour. And I can confirm it's just gone down nicely with the ham. And finally, we have the fig bombas covered in chocolate. OK, I've had this before here, but it is a really, really good dessert. Now, it's not too heavy. It's not too big in between two. It, it's it's all. Right. And with the aficionado de postres opposite, we had to get this one because it is an absolute belter. So here we are. Bit of cream, a bit of, I think it's raspberry coulis. Hmm. That's really good, then. It? it is a bit sweet, but figs are naturally sweet. I believe figs are something that they do produce around here, so whilst the dessert isn't like any sort of local classic, it does contain a local ingredient. And what's more, chocolate and red wine is a good match, and as luck has it, I've just got a little bit left to help wash down this last fig. And I'll keep saying it, and I'll carry on saying it. Don't be afraid of house wines in Spain. They're usually pretty good, and they're kept at the right temperature, which is not the 39 degrees or whatever it feels like outside today. So, Metanistas, I'm going to wrap things up here. We've had a very, very productive but short tour of Cáceres in Extremadura. Bit of a backwater in Spain, but the places that people don't know are often the best. <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of my little series, my mini-series on Extremadura. I hope you enjoyed it. Please continue liking, sharing and subscribing. Still plenty more content to come as I move on to another part of Spain. I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.